Welcome, beloved. Welcome to Miracula University, the Mystery School. Welcome to a moment of delicious expansion, divine insight into the true reality of being. I am Astarius Miraculae, and I love you so much. My subject today is, what is self-love? You know, there's so many different ideas about what it means to love oneself. And the reality of self-love is so much broader and has so many more layers than most people think. Many, when thinking of self-love, tend to think of it as something that you do for the exclusiveness of your individual selfhood. However, in truth, it takes the whole universe to make up who any of us really are. Because each of us are that holographic universe, the microcosmic universe container of the macrocosmic all that is. And so in great truth, all love and all acts of loving is the reality of self-love. Any being, anywhere, loving self is our own self, loving self, by extension. God, in the infinite sense of God's being, is the first exemplifier of this self-love. God is in an infinite state of loving self. Loving self as that macrocosm of all that is, and loving self as the multitudinous microcosmic expressions, meaning you and me and everyone and everything. And so God is in an infinite state of loving all of that. You see, in great truth, you really can't not love yourself because self-love is a reality that is co-eternal with God. Self-love is an eternal resonance. Hate, for example, is a resonance of time. And in time, everything has an expiration date, hate has an expiration date. It does not stand the test of eternity. It does not unfold down the corridors of forever. But love, being co-eternal with God, unfolds down the corridors of forever. Never was there a time when love was not, and never shall there be a time when love ceases to be. Love and self-love is co-eternal with God. So I'd like to share something with you now uh, that I wrote. It's a, a selection from my book, Miraculi, Song of Ascension, available via my website, hard copy, or digital downloads. However, the piece that I am sharing is called, I Do Take me. It's a tribute to the most forgotten loved one, which is self. And so I say, I love myself with all my heart, eternal knowing God in part. No more hatred, no more pain, legacy of heaven mine to claim. Once, I really hated me. A self-induced catastrophe, others began to hate me too. Hate's reflection became my due. When I look in any mirror, each reflection is my own. If I dislike that which I am, rejection by others will be shown. In self-acceptance let me grow, to hereby let all others know. I want them to accept me too. They only follow what I do. 
I ask myself to marry me. To thus fulfill my destiny, I promise always to be true, self-love and honor I am due. Sweet self, I'm sorry for the pain. Forgive and love me once again. I want me for eternity, a better lover than to be. Now every bond is sweeter too, for loving me is loving you. Within the temple of heaven's house, I do take me to be my spouse. Say that, beloved. Within the temple of heaven's house, I do take me to be my spouse. So let's break it down. First stanza says, I love myself with all my heart, eternal knowing God in part, no more hatred, no more pain, legacy of heaven, mine to claim. When you love yourself with all your heart, the eternal knowingness of your Godhood becomes that which is imparted unto you. When you love yourself with all of your heart, there is the diminishing of the energies of hate because the vibrations of love is a totally different frequency, a, a totally different rate of vibration. Like the vibrations of heat and light can occupy the same space at the same time and never interfere with each other because they have different rates of vibration. And so it is that love and hate have different rates of vibration. You see, and hate cannot penetrate the vibratory field of love. See, so when you love yourself with all of your heart, there will be no more hatred and no more pain. And you will receive the legacy of heaven, which has always been yours to claim. Now, in the human experience, we've all experienced moments of self-hatred. And we've even experienced moments of hating the haters. If you hate the haters, then you become an accessory to hate. Even though you might feel justified in your hating. But that hating only compounds the frequency of hate. Once I really hated me, a self-induced catastrophe. When we hate self, we become a self-induced catastrophe. And then others began to hate me too. Hate's reflection became my due. If you're hating on yourself, then you will attract all of the hate that exists within the whole universe that will then come at you and be a mirrored reflection of that which you've been doing unto yourself. That which you do unto the drop, you do unto the ocean. When I look in any mirror, each reflection is my own. If I dislike that which I am, rejection by others will be shown. You want to be loved by others, you must love yourself that way first. Then they have a proper example to follow in terms of how they love you. You can't lead where you won't go. The mirror won't reflect what you don't show. Show the world the way that you'd like to be loved by having a deep and abiding love for yourself and having a deep and abiding love for yourself is not just loving you in the exclusiveness of your individual being but it's also loving you in the all-inclusiveness of your universal being because every being in the whole of life in the whole of the universe is also your own self by macrocosmic extension to love the universe is to love your own self. You love yourself when you also love the whole universe. In self-acceptance let me grow, to hereby let all others know I want them to accept me too. They only follow what I do. You gotta show life and the beloveds how to treat you, how to love you, how to support you, how to empower you. I ask myself to marry me. When is the last time you proposed to you? 
I ask myself to marry me, to thus fulfill my destiny. I promise always to be true, self-love and honor I am due. So you are due self-love, you are due honor. It is your birthright, it is your inheritance, it is your trust fund. It was always meant for you. And so then we say, sweet self, I'm sorry for the pain Forgive and love me once again. I want me for eternity a better lover than to be. Now every bond is sweeter too. For loving me is loving you. Within the temple of heaven's house, I do take me to be my spouse. The expansion of the universe is at the mercy of you deliciously and delightfully loving your own self. When you are in a deep abiding relationship of love with you, the universe is more glorified in the resonance of love. The universe becomes more expanded in the juiciness of love by virtue of your individual expression of love because you are the microcosm of love. But the microcosm is the full container of the macrocosm as you are a holographic universe. A universe in minute expression. So you are a holographic expression of love. Any moment of love is meant to reach out and empower every other moment of love and in turn be empowered by every other moment of love. Love is co-eternal with God. Never was there a time when it was not and never will there be a time when it will cease to be. And there is no spot where love is not. And so love being co-eternal with God, self-love being co-eternal with God, it is an eternal happening. You can't not love yourself. The only thing that can happen is you allow your attention to be hijacked away from being focused upon your infinite self-love and then you're in the illusion of not loving you and that illusion can hurt like hell while the greater truth is that there is this, there is this greater expanse of yourself in an infinite state of self-loving. And if only one being in all existence remembers to be in the resonance of self-love, they are that in honor of and in connection with every other being. You want to be at resonance with the oneness of the wholeness of self-love. Even when you individually seem to be denying your self-love and you look around life and you see others in delicious love, uh, with themselves and expressing love for themselves, then that too is you by extension. You want to say, oh my God, look at how amazingly I'm loving myself through that part of me. And look at what a great regard I have for myself through these parts of me over here. You see, all love is your love. All self-love is your love by extension. So, you want to love the haters, because when you love the haters, something in you is believing in the redemption or the possibility of redemption of the haters, that they can come back to love, because hate's days are always numbered. You'll never stand the test of eternity. Hate is of time, where everything has an expiration date. Love is of eternity. If you believe in the possibility of the redemption of the hater to come into the resonance of love, then what you're doing is planting a significant deposit in the soul bank of the haters, and that deposit is going to accumulate interest until such time that the haters evolve to readiness and they make the withdrawal of that love that you deposited within their soul bank. To love yourself is to also love the haters. To love yourself is to also be in an infinite state of forgiving. Forgiveness is also a quality that is co-eternal with God. When you don't forgive, the heart is full of all of this black, dark effluvia, this energy working against you because resentment can only be housed within the heart. So you're, when you're resenting 
another being or resenting yourself, then you're letting your heart be filled up with this dark effluvia that is taking all of this space up in your heart and not really allowing space for you to receive the fulfillment of love and, and more wonderful experiences. You can't afford resentment because it's going to become housed within your heart. That's the only place it can live is in your heart. And it blocks the cellular resonance of greater love and greater peace and joy. You know, to love yourself is to feel sacred pride in the eternal goodness of life. When you can look around and you, and you see that every amazing and wonderful thing going on in life is a part of your own co-expression. Any being doing any good deed in life are doing so while being accompanied by a cellular counterpart that is your own self and my own self. See, we are cellular co-expressors of every good deed, cellular co-creators of every wonderful creation. Even the Master Christ, Yeshua, we co-walked on water with the Master Christ, co-raised the dead with the Master Christ, co-healed the sick. Why? Because there are multitudinous cellular counterparts of soul expression within the Master when he did all of those things, and that included you and me. You see, we co-received enlightenment with the Buddha under the Bodhi tree. We co-parted the Red Sea you know, with Moses, every wonderful thing in life is a co-expression of our own because life is interconnected. That which is done by the drop is done by the ocean. That which is done by the ocean is done by the drop. To love yourself is to feel sacred pride in the eternal goodness that you witness in life. That any wonderful thing going on, you had a co-creative hand in it. When you feel that, when you embrace that, you're really loving yourself and you experience a skyrocketing of your self-esteem. You feel so much amazing, expanded value in the beingness that you are. Speaking of value, on the 4th of November, we had a full moon in Taurus. Taurus is a sign that rules valuables. You know, it's the second house of money. You know, when the moon is full in Taurus, it means the sun is in Scorpio. And Scorpio has rulership over values. You see, the internal essence that brings forth the manifestations of things. See, value is that which creates valuables. Valuables cannot precede value. Value is an intangible something that is also co-eternal with God, of the resonance of eternity. Valuables, because they are of the material realm, they go and they come, all things of time and space. Some point will be erased. Valuables are perishable. Value, and values, eternal. You see, to love yourself is to recognize that when you, in harm, you are in harmony with the inner value of the blessings that you seek and you appreciate the intangible value of your blessings as much as you will appreciate those blessings when they manifest in valuables, then there is this great expansion of your self-love. You're truly loving yourself when you do that. To love yourself is to celebrate your smallest accomplishments in life. Sometimes we turn our nose up at things because we feel like, well, yeah, I accomplished that, but it's not really as big as it should have been. But you see, you want to maximize the minimum. See, if you, do, if you turn your nose up at it because you thought it was small, then you're minimizing the maximum, like seeing the glass is half empty, now it's in the potential of emptying. Instead, you want to see the glass is half full. Now it's in the potential of filling. That's maximizing the minimum. You get your magnifying glass out if those accomplishments seem small. And when you maximize the minimum, the minimum becomes the maximum. You are in a state of self-loving when you celebrate your smallest accomplishments. You are in a state of self-love when you don't hate your hatred or the hatred of another. Don't hate your hatred, don't judge your judgment, don't fear your fear, don't hurt more than your pain. 
you see, when you are in a state of recognizing that the central core of anything is a place of pristine purity because hate and all the negatives of life are always the periphery, always the circumference, can't be the center. Light, love, joy, bliss, God owns the center of everything. Don't hate the hatred. When you have the presence of mind and heart and the wisdom to do that, then you are in a genuine state of self-loving. Believe in the redemption of all, no matter how horribly one is behaving. Believe that they can be redeemed. See that redemption for them. That is a state of self-love. It is so beautiful to love, to love, to love. And so now I'm going to offer some didgeridoo uh, for my, my didgeridoo. I call this one Kundalini. Uh, Femifestation and give you a little, little sense of it. Uh, it's in the key of D. And uh, as I play, I'd like for you to receive this and allow it to be a catalyst for a greater expansion of your own self love. This healing given to you, me, and every being in all existence included in helping in your healing. On behalf of any man, woman, being, or thing that ever hurt you in any lifetime, I, as representative of every man, woman, being, and thing, sacredly apologize to you. By the grace of God, Goddess, the whole universe, our being, we give back to you any energy, any power ever falsely taken from you by any man, woman, being, or thing in any lifetime, and we hold sacred space for you to take back any energy, any power that you ever falsely gave away to any man, woman, being, or thing in any lifetime. Lifetime, calling back all of your fragments and soul pieces for your wholeness, your ascension, and your passionate expression of forgiveness. And I offer myself as a vessel for the transmission of God, Goddess Absolute, to facilitate this sonic blessing in the expansion of love and self love. <sighs> Thank <laughs> you. 
that frequency. It was a delicious thing to move through the portal of my being and may we all grow monumentally in this wonderful resonance of self-love. Uh, and speaking of that which is monumental, I'd like to make an announcement that there are some monumental blessings that are calling me back uh, to Phoenix, Arizona for the fourth time around. Oh my God, I've lived there three times before and now it's calling me back again. So I want to put this announcement out for all of you beloveds there, you know, in, uh, in Phoenix. I'm coming December 1st. I'll be there. And uh, it's just an amazing something that is waiting for me there, an amazing something that I'll be bringing forward because the resonance that I carry is always a great blessing. That's why my name is Miraculi. I am an instigator of miracles. And to all of my Atlanta beloveds, Atlanta has been wonderful for this last few years. It's been especially wonderful in the time that I've been able to share with my daughter Shanti. And uh, for those uh, Atlanta beloveds that might want to do a private session with me, please reach out soon because the time is drawing near for my exit. And of course, those beloveds in Phoenix, uh, then reach out after uh, the 1st of December. And I will uh, also in the description area, I'm going to include uh, my phone number so that you'll be able to reach out on a very personal level. So I feel a lot of joy and a lot of excitement uh, about that. I've always flourished in that area and Spirit takes me different places to do different things. I always move by the divine guidance of Spirit and so I'm feeling great joy that I'm getting ready to do that. And for beloveds all over the world, I do sessions by phone and by Skype. Uh, my readings um, go into the intricacies of who you are at the core essence of your being. It's a psychic astrology reading, also outlining the circumstances surrounding your life, and then also the, the energy of helping you to transcend, because any difficulties can be transcended, and that's how I work in a very solution-oriented way. So the, the readings are available, and then certainly sound healing transmissions with Reiki. The creme de la creme is when I do a reading healing combination. So if you have an interest in that, we can do that work by Skype no matter where you are you know, in uh, the world. I would love to serve and empower you on that very personal uh, level. And uh, all of the information is also on my website in terms of prices and different types of sessions and all of that. And as well as uh, 15 CDs and a couple of books. And I want you to make sure you surf my website and look at all of the different treasures that I have available there, you know, because there's just so much. God has been so kind to me, has given me so much. And I want to share that forward with you. And I thank you in advance for investing in some of those things and helping to facilitate the expansion of my abundance as I champion the expansion of your abundance as well. So I'm loving you with the passion of heaven. 
Aho ashe amen namaste hotep in la kesh alak in shalom satnam hariom your sacred juices are cooked and infinitely expanding juice to far eye may you always have many miles on your smile wiggle in your giggle tingling in your boots laughter ever after put in your strut wings on your butt that you'll always rise up rastafari and so it is and so it shall eternally be i love you so much <laughs>